What's up, everybody? This is Charles from the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast, and this is Wrecked. Hello and welcome to Wrecked Podcast. I am Bunchu alongside my esteemed colleague and co-host, Crypto Chamber. Chamber, how you doing, buddy? Doing pretty good, man. You know, just chilling out at home on a uh, Wednesday evening. Um, we have a we have a fun guest today that I'm an- anticipating some shenanigans happening. Uh, how's your day going? Uh, I am coming at you live from a Hampton Inn in Rochester, New York, the hustle that I exude on a daily basis to bring you this fantastic content is just downright exhausting, really. (laughs) I can appreciate that. I can appreciate that. I I might be having some connection issues, uh, but at least I get a free breakfast. (laughs) You know? How is that breakfast going to be? Uh, runny eggs and uh, shitty bacon. That's oh, what Hampton good to me, does. Man. Yeah, and but we have a fantastic guest with us today. You may know him from his Twitter account. You may know him from the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. You may know him from his new podcast, Crypto Is Depressing. We've got Charles with us. Charles, how you doing, buddy? Fantastic, man. It. I. I'm laughing at you just fucking being a hustler and getting these episodes out from a Hampton Inn because I can barely get my episodes out sitting in my room uh, and you're <laughs> on the road and you're somehow making it work. So congratulations Sh- uh, to you. Shaver, how many of these episodes do you think I do from a hotel room uh, a year? Minimum, a minimum 50% of them you do for the road. <laughs> I would think so. That's why I rely so heavily on your back home hustle because I literally pulled up to this hotel 15 minutes before <laughs> we're supposed to record, throw my stuff down, had tried to get on the internet and here we are. Yeah, I get, I get to work from home most of the time, so I get to do all the fun editing and the sound drops, and uh, which is probably the fa- my favorite part of doing the podcast. So, you, and um, it you, didn't used to be that way. I used to be the one that did all that. A hundred percent. I bet you then, did the first seventy five episodes. Yeah, and then what happened was I think I got to a point where I I just couldn't do them in time on the road, and I'm like, hey, could you do this? And then you decided it was your favorite thing to do. A hundred percent. Anyway, I'm sorry. So, that you got stuck with it because that is my least favorite part. Um, oh, I oh. love. Uh, I, I'll make. Uh, you'll. You'll. When you. When you hear this over, you won't be able to hear it when we're speaking. But I make drops where you know I'm talking over it. I'll find fun stuff. I. I really like to. Uh, to really spice up and give some quality content to the uh, to the listeners out there. It's. Hey. Uh, it's really a thing of art. So you guys blow anyway, me out of the water. Anyway, we got. Yeah, we no, not not at all. We have Charles with us. We are happy to have him. So, Charles, uh, why don't you tell the people here? Um, you know, we don't have to do the full how you got into crypto story because probably most of our listeners may have listened to your uh, our episode with you. But um, you know, kind of how you got your start in podcasting, and then what were you doing before you got into crypto? Okay, that's yeah, nobody wants to hear that. How did you get into crypto nonsense? Because I think, you know, that's like the standard question for every it's a sh- ever. It's always a shitty way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but you're right. There's no good way to get into crypto. No, exactly. <laughs> um, but okay, prior to starting the podcast, I'll start there. Um, I worked at a bank, I went to school for finance. It was very boring stuff in most people's eyes. I was an analyst, a credit analyst, or an underwriter, whichever one you want to call it. Uh, And so what I was doing was companies would send in their financial statements, I would review them, and I would see if they could get a loan. Uh, And I was just another kind of cog in this machine. And I enjoyed the work. It was cool work. It was very interesting to me. But at the same time, it was like, I fucking hate my life, to be honest. Um, and so I'd been in crypto for a while and I was kind of just trying to figure out how to ingrain myself in the community a little bit more, see if I could figure out an extra way to make money because, you know, I'd seen my portfolio grow. 
Uh, and then I decided, you know, let me get more involved. Um, and I think it was actually, uh, this is really shitty to say, um, and people probably might, might give me some hard times for this, but um, I saw Peter McCormick's income statement uh, that he puts <laughs> out, and I was like, holy fuck, this guy's making a ton of money. And um, so I kind of did a little bit of research with seeing what was out there. And um, I decided, hey, I'm going to start a podcast. Let me find a niche within this niche. Uh, and I had worked with small businesses at my job. I found it very interesting. I've kind of always been that entrepreneur starting little businesses through middle, high school, college, that sort of thing. And so I thought, let me give a voice to all of the people on Twitter uh, and in the crypto sphere, whatever you want to call it. Um, and let them share how they built their businesses and teach other people how to do it. Uh, because, you know, I feel like just holding is kind of not the greatest way to go about all of this. And I think if you want to really make some serious money, you either need to start a business or really get good at trading. Uh, so initially it started because I saw that there was a ton of money in it. I saw that I could help some people. Uh, and then it's kind of evolved into now a trading and entrepreneurs podcast. Uh, but that's kind of my intro, I guess. Is there anything else that you guys would like to know about it? I actually had a question. You had said in high school you had kind of started. What was kind of the first thing you had done in high school entrepreneur-wise? Uh, the first thing that came to my head was this guy's definitely selling weed. Uh, I, I, I was just going to say, Chamber, if that's not his, it's yours. Uh, I 100% <laughs> was selling weed. Yes, sir. That was – okay, but that wasn't the first business. Let me go back to – elementary school man i was a little fucking hustler i would bring candy to elementary school and i'd sell it to all the kids there uh what else was it there was this like i don't know if you guys know what sour grass is um it's like this we just called it sour grass it's like this root or like grass like flower and if you chewed on it it was like nice and sour in your mouth and i would go pick that shit and sell it at school in elementary school so like doing stupid shit then uh, middle school is more candy and snacks and shit and then high school I was definitely selling weed um, and then my mom found my stash and threw it out or flushed it down the toilet and that was the end of my weed selling <laughs> career people that are always trying to funny. stop my hustle you know that's funny. So I was gonna, I was gonna kind of say uh, along the same lines as Chamber, you know, not what your first one, but what your, what your best one, what your favorite one was, and maybe what your worst, uh, your biggest like failure of your entrepreneurial career was. Okay. Um, so I think. Let's see. I mean, the best My one has to be the candy. That, to me, just seems like a no-brainer. <laughs> Especially um, if it's the first one. I mean, right. there have been, like, so many, like, little one-off shits like that that, um, I don't know. I think my favorite one, it wasn't very successful. It was probably my favorite and, like, the biggest failure, I would say, um, was I was making jewelry that had ways for you to do, like, key bumps. And so you could, like, take bumps <laughs> of cocaine or, like, ketamine, right? And I'd, like... <gasps> I, I swear to God, I was selling those Jedi crystals that fucking Nye talks about all the time or got shit for. <laughs> really? I, I, okay, so I wasn't selling, you know, these healing property crystals or anything like that. I would, like, wrap up a spoon on some, like, other pieces of jewelry, and you could fucking stick them in your little baggie, and you could wear them around your neck, and you could take bumps with them. Um, and I actually think I <laughs> recently just found one, and it was, like, the most simple one. It was just, like... A little spoon, it's probably like as long as my pinky. And I just put that on a little nice little chain. Uh, and those I would sell for like, you know, five bucks or something like that. Um, and then there was like much more intricate ones that I'd sell for like, you know, 20, 30, 50 dollars. Um, so that was probably my favorite one just because it's like, you know, I'm at music festivals and I'm just like selling them and like buying drugs with the profits. Uh, and then Etsy, again, trying to keep a young entrepreneur down banned my store and i got stuck with like <laughs> a shitload of stuff to make all this stuff and I was like, what do i do with it you know like i can still go to these festivals but that was you know right around the time where i stopped going to as many uh, and so i just got stuck with you know a fuck ton of stones and spoons and pieces of jewelry uh so that was probably my biggest failure thus far i mean there's been stuff along the way um 
that may have been a little more detrimental or I just like stopped. And so that was like considered a failure. But I think getting stuck with, you know, a few thousand dollars of inventory when I was relatively broke uh, was kind of hard. That's interesting. Yeah. It's that, very interesting. <laughs> I'm glad I asked that question. <laughs> yeah, man. If uh, if anyone wants to give me shit, please hit me up on Twitter. I'll uh, this is one of another one of the reasons I defend Nye. I like his hustle. He's been hustling forever. Um so oh, I, I didn't know you were a Nye defender. Oh, I, I, I know you guys actually got into it with him a little bit. Uh hold, hold on. Yes, yeah, so it was the all Bunchu. It was up. all Bunchu. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not you not guys, me. okay. <laughs> not me. Chamber. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It's, and then the worst was when Chamber got into him from the into it with him from the podcast Twitter while I was away. Yeah, that was, that was, that was on me. That was on, that one was on me. I remember that very specifically. Have you guys hashed it out? Have you formally apologized online? Okay. Chamber Chamber put out an apology statement. Actually, he really on did. the show. On okay. the show. There we go. I mean, <laughs> it's funny to me because you know people that know me in real life know I am. Um, a, you know, I like to, I like to, you know, jab a little bit, like a friendly jab. I like to get under the skin a little bit. And in my opinion, I was very lightly, you know, messing with them. I, it wasn't the full force of chamber. Yeah. And uh, it was, uh, I'm like, oh, geez. I'm like, oh, it's too bad. I should have gave them the full, you know, <laughs> give them both barrels. Uh, but uh, it's too bad. This is I where g- we coined the term playfully disrespectful. Exactly. There That's we my go. wheelhouse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, That's yeah. my wheelhouse. Yeah. But, so no, uh, I, yeah. I, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, you know, he's, 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 he's blown by us now. He's now in, in TikTok making his rap videos. <laughs> I, and, uh, I, know, am very, I wish him the best. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm close with him. Like we chat pretty regularly and I still give him shit for the TikToks. I tell him. <laughs> They're really, is, really good. I can't stop watching them. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I tell it. him he's <laughs> terrible for it. I tell him he needs to get off TikTok. I will not stand for it. Uh, and he just keeps posting them. So, but yeah, no, I, I'm a, I'm a K-T. nine defender. <laughs> oh my Stop god! Stop it, Chamber. <laughs> We're trying to cause problems here. <laughs> yeah, that's what he does. He's playfully disrespectful. And I like and, it. And, and he did this with Andreas too. And then somehow Andreas came on our show. <laughs> yeah. So I actually have been a little disrespectful to the man himself. Um, <laughs> He, he came on my podcast, right? And, you know, he's got the huge audience. And so I expect, a, I expect, I, de- I should have demanded it, uh, a retweet from him, you know, on social media for his audience to see. And uh, mm-hmm. I don't think did you not get one? one either. No, we didn't get one. No, we did. One. I had, I went in through the back door to his assistant. Like, a, it was like a couple of emails. I sent, um, I sent his assistant an email as well. I said, here it is. Here's the tweet. Like, would love for Andreas to share it with his community. Didn't. So I called him out on Twitter. Like, it was just <laughs> one tweet. First, actually, first it was John McAfee or McAfee. I'm not sure how anyone pronounces it. I've heard both. Uh, he didn't retweet the episode I did with him. And so I made a tweet about it. I was like, ah, I, you know, John didn't retweet me, blah, blah, blah. Woe is me. Uh, and then I waited until the Andreas episode got dropped. And then I added to that tweet thread saying, didn't get it from Andreas either. So I'm just getting screwed left and right from these big players. <laughs> uh, it's pretty funny. <laughs> we'll not stand for it. So, but you know, I like, I like the playfully disrespectful. I like that, you know, you can call people out, but in a fun, lighthearted manner. Uh, and the people right, I react. typically only just use whatever they do and yeah. just kind of, you know, shine a little light on it and uh, have a little chuckle. But, uh, you know, I'm not too, too bad. No, this is, why I, this is why I don't tweet. <laughs> 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 Which is sad. We need more of it. I have, I have way too much fun on Twitter. Uh, yeah, we'll get there later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. I so, hope so. Uh, um, yeah, so anyway, all right. So you get to the podcast by um, basically by seeing the potential in the podcast space oh, is, yeah. it, and, and specifically the crypto podcast space. So talk a little bit about why you think there is potential there and, and what it is that you're trying to achieve with your podcast. 
Yeah, definitely. So, so my eyes, you know, were flashing dollar signs when I saw Peter's, uh, and I listened to his, and I was like, yeah, it's decent. It's nothing special, to be honest. Um, and so I was like, all right, first, you know, the money. I, I can make some money. I can make some good money if I make a good podcast. Um, and also on top of that, I do very much believe in Bitcoin and the cryptocurrency industry being a long lasting thing. Uh, and so my thought was, you know, it, it's a bear market. I got mine set up in the bear market. It was January of 2019, I believe. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I'm going to put in the work now. I'm going to get as many episodes recorded and out there as possible so that when things turn around and people start checking out these podcasts and YouTube channels, I'll be there with a nice backlog. Uh, and I think that's where I think I'll be able to make some decent money. And until then, you know, everyone's kind of watching their portfolios just dwindle away, right? And so I say, if I can show everyone who's kind of gotten wrecked and lost a lot of money, how they can start some sort of side business or improve their trading. Like, I think it's a win, win, win. Um, I, I always say that it's a win, win, win for the people listening. They get to hear that for me, I get to make some money. And then for the guests, they get some exposure on their, on their project or their business that they've built. Um, and so I, I just thought, you know, I could help everybody out in that situation. And that's kind of why I decided to pursue it and stuck with it. Um, I think at one point I actually stopped putting out episodes because the money wasn't rolling in like I thought it would be, uh, and the viewership was relatively low. And then I got back to it, put some more effort in, and finally we are profitable, we are making money, uh, and so I'm definitely not turning back now. That's awesome. So how often did, are you putting out episodes? So I'm putting out two a week for each show. So technically it's four shows a week now, which is going to absolutely Damn destroy my you. life. <laughs> look at you. Yeah. It, it, like I, I don't, I don't know how people do the whole five a week. Cause I know a lot of podcasts will do that. Uh, and I am going to kill myself doing this. Honestly. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. I don't know if your stuff gets flagged for that kind of language. And I apologize if so. Um, no, fuck that. I don't think it okay. does. Yeah, cool. <laughs> those people. Cool. Every, every, every single one of our episodes, probably against our better judgment, is marked explicit. No, I, <laughs> I, I understand that, but like, I, I think I was on a Twitch stream, and I said something about killing myself. And it was like a joke, very clearly. Oh. But they said that the, they like analyze audio, and they can pick that up, and people get banned for that kind of shit. Um, oh, wow. Interesting. Never yeah. heard that. I mean, some fucked up shit has been said on this show. And <laughs> okay. Yeah. And you guys are still here. So, yeah, um, like worse, way worse than that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yeah, I plan on putting out four a week, two from each show. Um, Tuesdays, Thursdays for the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. Sundays, Wednesdays for Crypto is Depressing. Um, so, uh, yeah, it, it's it's a nightmare already. I'm, I think we're one or two weeks into Crypto is Depressing and... I'm depressed now. <laughs> well, I mean, you are what you do, you know. So, uh, <laughs> the the uh, <laughs> um, one thing I find interesting is so you don't you don't technically on the crypto entrepreneurs always have crypto people on. Is that correct? Yeah. So I, I mean, I've been trying to branch out a little bit, but for the most part, I would say like. It, it, it started strictly crypto entrepreneurs and then it moved to crypto entrepreneurs and traders and then it moved to crypto entrepreneurs, traders and figureheads, I would say it was is the best term for them. Um, but I think everyone there is like some sort of relation to the cryptocurrency scene. Um, yeah, I that's mean, what I was going to ask if you had interviewed anybody that wasn't you know, uh, really crypto based or, uh, and what their thoughts on the entire, you know, crypto Bitcoin space were, if you'd had anybody that wasn't, uh, you know, uniquely interested in it before that. Yeah. So actually for the new show, we just had some chick on, she's, she's a writer in LA or something like that. And the episode was supposed to be like her dunking on it's for the new show. And it's supposed to be her kind of dunking on crypto nerds and 
saying how you guys are all we're all lame and you know terrible people um but she actually so so we deserve to be depressed (laughs) yes yes exactly Uh, i was about like getting a girlfriend and whatnot and how you shouldn't talk about your sick obsession with cryptocurrencies um but she actually she had some knowledge of the industry she had heard about bitcoin um, she said she followed a certain number of people like CZ and Andreas, a couple big names, um, Craig Wright, that kind of thing. Uh, and she said she didn't really understand or care to know about the technology. Um, and she wasn't sure if it was going to be a long lasting thing that's here, you know, 15 years from now. Um, but I'm trying to think of, you know, I'm, I can scroll through the list really quick and, I'm honestly looking at every one of them and you know some of the episodes we don't talk about crypto businesses like I've had art on to talk about Amazon selling uh I've had Kobe on to talk about were you doing that for a while I was yeah still am it's like Uh, up and running how's that go uh it's good there's like a couple different things that I'm doing for it you know you can like buy overseas and then ship it to a warehouse Amazon warehouse uh for a while I was doing a lot of retail arbitrage where I'd like be shopping and I'd see some shit in the store that's discounted. Uh, I would check it out on Amazon, see what the price difference is. And I'd just buy a shit ton of it at the store and then just send it. Um, so it, it's going well, but I've now that's hustle, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Like, that's hustle. <laughs> that, that was like, like, so I originally had it where I would buy product, you know, from China, have it shipped over and I would send it off to a warehouse and they take care of all the shipping and handling, right? Uh, but the margins on a lot of that stuff are very, very low. So it's like, unless you're doing huge volume, you're not making that much money. Uh, and it was great while I was working because, you know, I'd just get it sent over, I'd ship it off, and it would kind of be out of my hands very quickly. Um, but I wasn't making a ton of money. So when I quit my job, I was like, I need to make some extra, extra money before this podcast starts kicking in and I can monetize the podcast. Uh, and so I had seen, I don't know if it was like a video or an article or some shit about it. Uh, and I was like, I can do that. Like, that seems easy enough. And so I was just cruising, you know, Lowe's, Walmart, Home Depot, even Trader Joe's. You can buy shit and then s- turn around and flip it on Amazon. Uh, and so when I quit, I was like, I- I'm going to get some, you know, extra cash built up. And so I was doing that. But now all the Amazon stuff is kind of on the back burner just because the first podcast is starting to get a little more serious. I'm doing a little bit more research when I have guests on uh, because it is now (laughs) sponsored and I need to make it as kind of professional as possible. Uh, And then second podcast, like (laughs) I said, four episodes a week. It's just like, I don't have time to do much else. Yeah. Uh, I heard that chuckle chamber. What was that? (laughs) What was that that chuckle about? (laughs) Very serious. You have to be professional because you got sponsors? Yeah, of course. <laughs> that's uh, that's new to me. I'm sorry. I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> Are you guys? <laughs> no, we I mean, like... We don't necessarily play that game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. They know no. what they're getting into with us, I think. See, yeah. that's that's I, you guys. You're totally right in the fact that they know that you guys are a less serious. You guys have a lot of fun. Uh, whereas mine, it's, you know, like a business podcast so i gotta absolutely live up to that hype but it's funny because one of my sponsors actually reached out and was like hey do we get included on that crypto is depressing show that you've started like are we sponsors for that as well and i was like ha. do you guys want your name attached to that like i don't, I don't really know that you want your name attached to a show called crypto is depressing go follow our exchange <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> right um so I, I was a little thrown off by that we are looking for sponsors for that show um we just don't know who's going to want to at this point uh but i think we can figure something out as we go along zoloft <laughs> right that's what i said <laughs> I, I was like i was like we're gonna get prozac to sponsor it yeah <laughs> oh man that's funny chamber what do you got here anything no, I think we should. Uh, I want to hear some of these uh, wreck stories that I've I've heard legend about. So that's what I was going for. All right, so uh, we wouldn't be wrecked podcast unless we ask you some of your best wreck stories. We've heard every real life wreck story in the book as far as uh, crazy to tame. So don't hold back. Uh, there's nothing we've heard. Uh, uh, God, someone saw a guy die who died with a boner like, like oh we've, literally heard, we've literally heard it all i so. still think my the, the one that affects me the most is still um uh godson's 
uh, tale of like going like I think he did he grow up in Africa? Yeah. Is that what, and yeah, he was telling this crazy story about like I had to walk to school and there was like dead bodies on the ground and I'm like, Jesus this is Christ. like in a in a civil war torn. So country. we've heard everything from like funny to heavy and everything yeah. in between. So, so um, go yeah. ahead. A real life wrecked story to share with us. Get wrecked. Yeah, I'll. Uh, I was like, you know, kind of try to think of a story that was, you know, wrecked in a sense and. Honestly, like, my life's been pretty cushy. I grew up in a nice area. I didn't have too much crazy shit go on. And I was racking my brain. And honestly, like, the only thing that I can really think of that people can make fun of me for this, and I laugh at myself for it, but uh, I don't know how long ago it was. Um, I moved in with my girlfriend of maybe two months, which was already, mm. like, a very big <laughs> red flag, right? Um, and she didn't have a job. And, um, so we move into this apartment. She's looking for a job for maybe like eight months or something like that. She's got some money. She's paying her half of the rent. Uh, and to, like, you know, relationships getting tense two months into it. We decided to live together. So it was terrible, terrible, terrible. It wasn't going to last from the start. Uh, and things start getting tense, uh, towards the end of us living together. And she still doesn't have a job. And uh, we're like, okay, well, what do we do? You know, how can we kind of work through this, make this thing happen? Uh, and so we decide that we're not going to renew another lease and that we are going to, I'm going to move back into my mom's house. And I was like, you know, are you going to, what are you going to do? Are you going to move back into your parents? Uh, and she says, no, I can't move into my parents. Like we don't have that good of a relationship. So you know, this is post-college life. I'm an adult and my girlfriend and I, who shouldn't be dating in the first place, decide to move back into my mom's house. Uh, and then for like three, four months, we lived at my mom's place and then eventually the relationship fell apart. Um, Wait, you lived at you lived at your mom's place with a girl you weren't technically dating, or were you still? We, technically we were dating? like we were. That was like very on was the on verge of us like we shouldn't be dating. Like we were at each other's throats by the time our lease ended, and I was just like, you know, like you can stay here since you have nowhere else to live, and like we're still kind of dating, but not really. Um, but you know, that's like my wrecked story. I don't really have much. Like that's that's pretty lame story in my opinion. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I, yeah, I mean, I wanted people to have a chance to laugh at me and tell me I'm a loser um, because I talk a whole bunch of big game on Twitter. Um, but yeah, that was we my. Got a was, segment co- we got a segment coming up for that. So yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm I was hoping. I was hoping for some sort of like drug wreck story. I got a couple of those. I, I mean, can't I'm, imagine. Trying to, I'm trying to think. Like all of my drug stories, I would say, have been like super fun. Like. You know, buying no close calls with death. Um, I know I have. <laughs> I'm trying to. Like, oh, jeez. I mean, like four day benders where you feel like your heart's gonna give out, like that kind of stuff. But yeah, no, that's like, correct. Yeah, I guess. Like I don't know. Like we we would spend like like my buddies and I would pick up like you know two ounces at a time of blow and like we would just go rent that's a that's a lot of snow i know i know <laughs> that's a canadian amount of snow yeah <laughs> like it's a yeah yeah like they, they they would sell it so like they would be picking up a lot selling a lot but i remember like one time specifically we rented a what was it uh, i guess it would a hotel no it wasn't like a house or anything like that we just had a hotel and for like a week and a half straight we just had this hotel rented out and we had two ounces of Coke just sitting on the dresser next to the Bible. <laughs> and we just did not sleep. We didn't eat. We just did cocaine and drank for like a week and a half straight or so. Oh. Um, but no, see, that's the thing. It was fun as hell. Like, I do not regret it. I had a wonderful time. I'm young. I bounced back <laughs> from it very quickly. And people probably like listen to that and they're like, wow, that guy has a drug problem. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it's only a problem if you can't get a hold of it. You know what right? I mean? Right, yeah. Like it was just like a fun thing to do like during the summer one year. And like, you know, we're just having fun. So I don't know. I wouldn't say that I, that was wrecked, you know, like uh, the I'm, last the last time I did uh, copious amounts of cocaine uh, was my uh, bachelor party. And, I, you know, I keep my I keep my circle pretty tight. Um, so I think my bachelor party probably had, I don't know, six or seven guys. 
and uh, my dad, who, you know, he's, he always wants to hang out with us. Um, he's like, you know, can I come to the bachelor party? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Oh you know, we're going to, we're going to go golf and we're going to, you know, we're going to drink a shitload, uh, back at the, you know, at the, at the hotel. I said, you can come. So anyways, so we play golf and I didn't realize, you know, all the party favors that were going to be at this bachelor party. And sure enough, you know, uh, I go to the bathroom and find a couple of nice, uh, a, ni- a couple of nice uh, slopes uh, on the on the bathroom counter. So it turns out, you know, we're just kind of taking turns going to the bathroom throughout the night. And I'm, you know, I, I get into it a little bit, but that's not my drug of choice. And you know, I had done this is probably the most I had ever done. And about you know two o'clock in the morning, we're we're outside of of the hotel room, and you know we're fucking around, and my nose just starts bleeding, <laughs> and I'm like shit. I'm like, uh, am I like gonna have a heart attack now? Like I'm like I'm like, is this is this how it ends for me? <laughs> and I'm like, I gotta hide this from my dad because I'm like he has no idea what's happening. He's like literally everybody else around him is just uh, you know out of their mind, and you know I'm like. How am I going to explain? Like, oh, like I smashed my face on the wall when you weren't looking. Um, so sure enough, just blood covered everywhere. And there's me trying to, like, figure out what to do. And, uh, you know, sure enough, I, you know, I, he, he saw. He's like, what happened? I'm like, I smashed my face up against the wall. He's like, oh, geez, that probably hurt. I'm like, it did. Uh, now we shall never talk about this again. <laughs> and when you said it but, did uh, hurt, yeah, to this day. Were... Sorry. Go. Yeah, I was gonna say to, to to this day he still thinks I just smashed my face up against the wall when he wasn't looking. My straight edge ass doesn't really have any of these stories. So <laughs> oh, I, have, I have a lot of drinking stories. None of these. <laughs> um, all right. So should we should we yeah, hit him with think, the surprise segment? I think now? I think we oh, should. Oh no. Uh oh. Well. <laughs> uh oh. Well, so we actually didn't originally have this planned, but. I figured I literally we started recording and I just said I just messaged him and I was like how did we miss this as an opportunity we've been doing this with a lot of our guests lately and we do it to each other and uh, so I'm gonna name this segment and it's actually very fitting versus uh, what you the stories you just told us Um, we usually call it defend that tweet but uh, we're gonna call this Charles versus his mom Charles versus so, my mom. Uh oh. <laughs> so we have we have compiled a, a list of three or four girlfriend slash mom related tweets that oh, you've put out. I love them. And we're going to ask you to defend these. Defend them, <laughs> Chamber. In, would you? In, in would what you sense? Like to start? Just what were you thinking at the time? Where does this come from? From an actual experience, okay, or like yeah, yeah. you know, just things explain like it. That. Explain it. Yeah. Yeah. We want a, a little bit of an elaboration on it. Of okay. Course. I'll start with the first one. Um, this one actually rings true to me because uh, my my mom is uh, is an avid listener of the show. Um, so this so is she going to hear that story? A hundred percent. I think I've told oh my, my mom that story. Oh, I think Jesus. I've told my my mom. Chamber has a, no shame. No, no I, yeah. I I respect. I'm an open. It. I'm very close with my parents, and like I talk about drugs with them, so I, I respect that a lot. I get it. See, there's nothing to hide this way. No, there's, you never have to. You never slip up. Exactly. Okay. So this is from January twentieth. Uh, so the tweet. two days ago. <laughs> yeah, two days yeah, ago. You tweet a lot, bro. You do. <laughs> I'm, I, I, was, I had a tear in my eye when I was scrolling down that timeline. All right. For the first time ever, I asked my mom to listen to an episode of my podcast. And then about an hour later, she told me I was adopted and needed to be out of the house by February. <laughs> so yes. you have actually kind of answered some of that. Are you still in your mom's house? No. Have you found a new place to live? Yes. Because uh, so I- February is about, uh, what, 11 days, 10 days away, something like that? Yes, yes, yes. So I, I like ticket. <laughs> so, okay, I like to have a lot of fun on Twitter. 
a lot of what I say is complete nonsense. So like when I say, oh, I'm living at home and like I live with my mom or I'm doing this with my mom, it's like all 100% a joke. I have moved out. I moved out of my parents because that story that I told with the girlfriend, that was, Mm -hmm. I would say two plus years ago. Um, Okay, so that was a little while ago. Yeah, so that was a while ago. And after we broke up, I probably spent six months at home or something like that. Uh, So it's been about a year, year and a half or so that I have been out of the house. But I love tweeting about being at my mom's house. And the reason is Nate Bag, he still lives at home. And anytime (laughs) anytime he tweets about his parents, I fucking lose it. Like, it's just the funniest shit. He's always going off about how his parents are terrible and they're, like, ruining his (laughs) life, right? And so I pretty much just stole that from him. I stole his content and, like, tried to repurpose it. Here's my here's here's another one I thought was funny. This is Charles versus Tinder versus mom. <laughs> this is her. Can you host me? Yes. Her. Awesome. So what time should I come over? Me. I see we're no longer talking about my podcast. Her. We are not. Me. No, I can't host. My mom says I'm not allowed to have girls over. <laughs> See, I, I, oh man, it, like it really, in my opinion, makes good Twitter content. Um, I like. I've definitely talked about my podcast with people on Twitter. I mean, on Tinder or Bumble because I'm banned from Twitter. Tinder, Jesus. You're, oh wait, okay. Here's the story. Real. This is a real life wreck story. How are you banned from Tinder? <laughs> okay, so. I've told this story before. I don't know if it's been in discords or actually on Twitter uh, that I've told it, but apparently you are not allowed to be naked in any of your profile pictures. And <laughs> I was naked in Hashtag one of them. free the nipple. Yeah, no, okay. So let me, let me explain a little bit more. I was actually with my girlfriend. We were in Big Sur and there was like this little hot springs, little pool area that you could hang out in. And so we were doing some skinny dipping back there and she took a picture of me and you can very much see my penis. And I was like, (laughs) but like it's, it's underwater. So it's like a blurred, like you can see it, but like, it's not like a full blown. It's a big, it's a Bigfoot penis. (laughs) Yes. It's It's like kind of there. It was like scuba diving. No, no. So you were like cock Cousteau. (laughs) (laughs) See, you guys, god damn it, you guys are so much funnier than me. I, 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 I can't come up with this kind of shit on the fly like you guys do. Um, but yeah, no, I'm probably waist deep in this pool. So it's like right at the cutoff, you can like see it because it's like close enough to the surface of the water where it's not like blurred, you know. Um, and so I threw that one up there. And then shortly after I received plenty of messages about how my penis is out in my profile picture and i'm like yes i know that (laughs) i put it there um so i think i got reported enough times or like their algorithm picked up that it was a dick pic uh and they just banned me they didn't even tell me like hey like you can't be doing that or we're gonna delete your photo i just got straight banned um wow that's good i like that that's a that's a real life wrecked uh story, i knew we'd find some some gems in there I, yeah. especially when you're uh you know trying to acquire girlfriends oh yeah <laughs> so, I'm, I'm very you know that single. takes out one main avenue right <laughs> so, bumble is garbage um, i don't know chamber if, the i don't know if hashtag for that. today's episode is cock for <laughs> oh, sure 100 percent. i already wrote it down hashtag okay, cock <laughs> All right, uh, you got a couple. We have a couple more. I think we I do have, have another one. one. Yeah, I do have another one. This is uh, have, from from I have January. One more after this is from January twelfth. Uh, it says her taking off her sweater. Is that a microphone? Please don't tell me I have a podcast. Me in nothing but socks. <laughs> her. This is weird. I think I'm gonna go. Me. Can you please leave through the window? I think I heard my mom wake up. <laughs> And then shortly after that, you, you <laughs> subtweeted that tweet, looks, uh, you know, asterisk, looks at retweet button, only four, re- only four retweets, you call everybody cowards. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's scared to retweet this one. Yeah, let me, let me go through a couple things there. I love people calling, calling people cowards on Twitter, especially for not retweeting. See, you guys are kindred. 
I know. <laughs> okay. This is so good. See, I don't have this kind of skill on Twitter. I, I really need to step it up. I'm I'm better on Twitter than I am, you know, talking person to person. I think I'm much less funny. I'm not as witty off the fly. Uh, but if I sit there for a second, I can usually come up with some good stuff. Um, but for that one, again, you know, I think like the living at home, having a podcast and like telling girls about it and being like that awkward douchebag with the podcast, I think it makes for relatively good Twitter content. I think it's hilarious. Um, we just made a whole segment on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So I, I really <laughs> do push, this all day. I really push like I have a podcast and girls think I'm a dork for it. I live at home. <laughs> uh, what else? That I'm pretty poor. I like push that I'm poor. Um, but those are like my, my big ones right there is like the podcast, Mom's House, uh, crypt. I'm really bad at trading and like really bad here's at the, the last, industry. Uh, here's, here's the last uh, Charles versus Mom one. <laughs> I think this, this one was my favorite one. Um, me, I've, sec- I've secured two sponsors. Mom, I don't think that's how it works. You can only have one. Me, what? Of course you can have more than one sponsor. Mom, <laughs> me, Mom. You have a drinking problem. <laughs> okay, so this one I is remember, this I one's a little more that. rooted. That very good. Yeah, this one's a little more rooted in reality because my mom does think that I have a drinking and drug problem. Uh, so when I and like when I say I have a sponsor, like I have I have texted her I have a sponsor and she has replied with what a sponsor for what? And so this one is like pretty rooted in reality that's why it's so funny yeah yeah, yeah. the play on the obvious play on word of sponsor is just really good yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so like th- i don't know that's again that like i think it, it makes very good content but that one is like a lot more rooted in reality just because my mom does think i have a drinking problem or like knows i have a drinking problem because i might uh still unclear there um but no yeah yeah i i, I love the I love the bit. I have a lot of tweets about my mom uh, that probably speaks to some deeper rooted issues. Um, but thank you guys for, for bringing those tweets back up. <laughs> that's what we do. <laughs> love it. Oh man. So that's, uh, that's, I mean, that's what we do here. Chamber, do you do, what are we thinking here? You want to do the, uh, <laughs> Do you want to do the final segment? What do you think? It's up to you. you I think uh, we can. Yeah, I think we can. We kind of threw that one in there because we thought it would be funny, so we took up a little extra time. But as long as Charles has time, we might Oh, as well. yeah. No, I got nothing. I think I got to hop on a call with one other person later in the day, but it's like no. Is it no, your sponsor? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually um, someone for the new show. We're going we're gonna to talk Ooh. about how shitty their life is, so. You know, <laughs> someone nice. else is out. Yeah, I got, I got to let life. it all out on this. Oh, sorry. There's one other thing that just came to mind. I love talking about my therapist on Twitter. I love tweeting. About oh, the those therapist. are so like I was looking at. I was looking for some of those, but I literally, since we were putting this together on the fly, I couldn't get back far enough in your timeline to get to those. So <laughs> I don't know if you know how to use that Twitter search function, but that helps a lot. Um, uh, I, I need I to do get not. better with that. Okay, here, <laughs> I'll, I'll walk you through it right now. It's super easy. If you're in the Twitter search, like the little search guy, if you type from and then do a semicolon oh. or a colon, what's the one with just yeah. the two dots? Is that a colon? colon? Colon. A colon, and then the person's handle, so mine would just be Charles or Crypto Charles underscore underscore, no at, just from, no spaces in any of this, colon, my handle. Then you can type any word after that, and it'll bring Ooh. up all the tweets with that word. You oh. just taught it. I, I think that's that's the really valuable content we're here for on this. There podcast. it is. Like, we sorry if it. you guys, <laughs> sorry if you guys hear some clicking and some typing really quick. But like, if I do it for like from crypto Charles underscore underscore, and then type therapist. Oh, whoo! <laughs> <laughs> I got I, I got you know plenty of them right now. Just banger after banger after banger. <laughs> Well, we'll have to save that for our next uh, our next encounter. Yeah, Charles yeah. versus therapist. <laughs> no, but you use that for your guests. It's it's like a really helpful tool that I use to find my like good old tweets, or if I'm looking at someone else trying to call them out on some shit. That will make our uh, defend that tweet segment a lot easier. Much Chamber. easier, yeah. Thanks, Charles. Of course, of <laughs> course. We appreciate that. Here Charles. to help. That's it.
All right, Chamber, you're you're on this last one. You're going. All for right. It. So we uh because bunch you the bunch you the straight edge. <laughs> <Nerd>. <laughs> We get to play to my so, strengths right now. So what we like to do is is uh, occasionally we like to draft varying you know varying topics, whether that be movies, music, what have you. But since we had you on, I think we should do a drug slash alcohol draft. Can't Bunch, you want to run right. down the rules of our draft? So the rules are going to be, we're going snake-style drafting here. So I think we're only going to go three deep each, Let's right? go three deep. Okay. Yeah, I think that's fair. And then the results will be put on Twitter, and the people vote. And you're, you know, you're put on blast. People, I, I'm notoriously good at winning these, but mm-hmm. this one I will not win, I guarantee. I think so. we, have to, we have to implement the, uh, you must have uh, either tried the alcohol or tried the drug in order to draft it. Correct. Okay. Uh, that's that's usually what the rules are. So that's why I kicked your ass in the burger draft. You sure I'm did. A fat I... <laughs> American fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there you go. So, now we're now we're in your backyard. So, <laughs> so quick. Question. Let's see here. Quick question. Yeah. Go ahead. Are we separating and doing two different ones for the drugs and then the alcohol? Or no, is it it's all a mix. One? It's just going to be mixed in. You have to prioritize what's the best thing. <laughs> Uh, what's the best? Okay, and so, you also want to play to the audience too. I, so you know what I'm going to say for the up. first one, right? I do. I know. Right? Okay, hold like, on. <laughs> the the order oh, goes fuck. as follows, fuck. and and it's snake style. So uh, the order: random draw, bunch you. God damn it. Chamber. God damn it. <laughs> Charles. All right. And then and then you're gonna get two in a row. Yeah. So you it'll go. Yeah, okay. So you yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go before. And I I don't rank this as my number one. However, it's really the only drug I've really done. So I'm gonna take it off the board wow. now because you're gonna do it. I. I, I have to. Yes, I, I, the only, have to. I, I know what you're gonna do. It's it's the only one I've really ever done, so I gotta take the only drug and then build the rest out from there. there so go. I'm going with the old marijuana. Oh, okay. Gosh. Wow. Jeez. Okay. That really that really puts a chink in my armor. That really does, because that's your that's your uh <laughs> That's my bag. Yeah. All right, and Charles is gonna be third. So with my pick, shit. I'm gonna take beer. Wow. Oh, what? you fucker. I'm going wow. right. Yeah. You know oh, what? You, you want to take some pot? I'll take your beer right from you. How about that? Oh, Guys, my God. Do you not really? know my Twitter shtick at all? Like, you, this is. Well, the, I wanted to make sure you got it. I yours. know. I know. And I appreciate that. <laughs> this is why I was so upset when I knew I was going third. Because I think no matter who picked cocaine, a Cocaine Charles <laughs> episode, like, that is going to be the winner for this one. I guarantee it. Um, so like I, I have had people, you do not understand how many people tag me like daily in cocaine posts. They're like something, 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 cocaine, ha ha, crypto Charles. And I'm like, like, oh, I think I saw Romano post something the other day like that. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 No, I remember that. He like tagged some, he tagged me and something about cocaine. Like when people see cocaine on Twitter, I think my name pops into their head, which is fucking awesome in my opinion i'm gonna start doing that from crypto charles underscore oh underscore. god if you type that in and look cocaine you'll have <laughs> 300 tweets at least at <laughs> least um that's my like that's my go-to in tweets um so that's number okay, one okay so you're pick, you're, you're picking number one now you, you get second you pick. get the pick coming back yeah I, I i'm trying to think i'm trying to play to your audience because my like i think we do have a little bit of discrepancies in the audience and i know for a fact that like uh, some of my friends on discord are huge on speed uh they love their like (laughs) amphetamines like adderall and meth to an extent which i'm like not okay with but i think adderall (laughs) is this is where like (laughs) i i i've never done meth and i've never done heroin and i don't think i ever will but i've like fucking munched on Adderall like it's nobody's goddamn business and that's just like I miss okay, so the, the, I miss the Adderall pick? boat that I'm picking a, I'm pick, be, I mean after me uh, amphetamines it, as a whole okay you're taking amphetamines okay yeah all right jeez okay all right all right all right jeez um um I'm gonna go with my favorite 
drug, and I'm going to go with MDMA. Right on. Uh, or And that would include ecstasy in any kind of variation. So Molly slash ecstasy, I guess, is what I'll go with. Love it. Okay, so... I don't know what a lot of booze left, and 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 uh, it's generic booze. So whatever the yeah type the, of the the genre of exactly spirit, exactly, right? Yeah. <clears throat> because that's all I got left to pick. Really, mm-hmm. I was really <laughs> upset you took beer from me. I should have. God damn it! I you I knew you wouldn't be that nice to me. Never. Um, all right. Well, I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go to, go with the good old bourbon whiskey. Ooh, that, you know, fuck! You got weed and bourbon. Come on. Yeah. Maybe I'll still pull this out. Wow. I think so. You got weed off the top. I think that that definitely uh, that definitely puts you in an advantageous position. So uh, you get another one, right? Oh yeah, I get to finish out mm-hmm. my draft. Uh, let's see. Um, <clears throat> this is tough. I don't really know um, what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna go with. A newfound, a newfound spirit that Ooh. I have been getting into more lately. Like if you asked me this a year ago, uh-huh. I wouldn't enjoy it, but uh, I now know what good versions of this are. I'm gonna go with tequila. Hmm. Okay. Some Avion tequila or something. <laughs> uh, specifically, if I had to pick a brand, Classe Azul. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> So Very I'm allergic. Nice. So I'm allergic to tequila. So I don't know anything uh, about it. I've like had it. Really? A time. Yeah. All right. So my la- my final roster is weed, bourbon, tequila. Chamber, you have one more left. So I have yeah, I have beer. I have MDMA ecstasy, and my final pick will be psilocybin mushrooms, aka magic mushrooms. Okay. I gotta I go like drug. I gotta go sauce. drug heavy. No, I like I feel it. Like that's a solid chamber. Yeah, I think that's right in my like. I like all of those things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I like it. Um, see, I, I'm torn right now. I've got two in mind, and I'm trying to figure out because, like, I love both of them. They're both very different, and I'm trying to figure out which one plays better to the audience so I can win this <laughs> thing. Uh, and I'm thinking now this is the Twitter audience too, so you can you can pull from your oh I'll pull yeah, you know, yeah, yeah from your base yeah you're gonna get retweeted because this is gonna ha- have you tagged in it so your your own Twitter audience would be oh I'm t- I'm tweeting it out don't worry I'm I'm getting it out there <laughs> I think like the emphats from my audience will boost me up a little bit um, <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out between ketamine and acid which one I want to pick because I love them both and like for different reasons. <laughs> I love how he goes with three drugs. That's oh, first for of all. sure. Like, I, I am not picking booze. Like You only did it because out of spite for me. I 100%. <laughs> yeah, that's the only reason you didn't. <laughs> I mean, and I the only reason And the only reason I didn't go with three alcohols is for is because of you. Okay, if, right. if, if, you, if you didn't pick three, or you didn't go with three alcohols for me, I won't go with three drugs. I will just pick wine, because I am a wine mom. Oh, there we go. I love shitty wine. Like, I'll drink a bottle of shitty wine and just, like, right after get sloppy. you get from the therapist. Yeah, I'll get sloppy. <laughs> like, it's fun. I love wine drunk. Um, so I'll pick all wine. Right. I'll pick wine. Okay, I got. we got it here. We're all mixed. We're all mixed. There so, we go. I like this. This is a party. This, all right, we're going to put... Yeah, we, dude, we have a ridiculous party. <laughs> um, it's a Tuesday all right. for me. I don't have a job anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a job, guys. You, you think I'm joking when I talk about the drug stuff on Twitter, and to an extent I am, but like, there's probably cocaine residue on my laptop right now. Um, and uh, on my mic, on my Yeti Blue, <laughs> <laughs> and some other bags uh, of drugs hidden in my room somewhere. So amazing for all the feds <laughs> listening. That was a joke. Yeah, well, I don't think a lot of feds are listening to our stuff anyway. Um, but that's gonna do it for us. It's gonna wrap us up. So before we uh, we go here, just wanted to say thank you again for your time. This has been fun. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Uh, you got to, you know, uh, you got to unbutton the top button on from the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. But again, before you get out of here, uh, let the people know where they can find you, where they can follow you, all that good stuff. Yes, I appreciate that, and thank you so much for having me on, guys. I'm. I know I was a little bit spastic and I talked a lot, so thank you for bearing with me. Uh, That's what we do here. Yeah. Uh, so on Twitter <laughs> is probably the best place to find me. It's at 
Crypto Charles with two underscores after it. Um, and then if you want to check out the podcast, you can probably just Google the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. We're on most of the major podcasting platforms. Uh, and then if you also just Google Crypto is Depressing, our podcast should so- show up. Uh, So those would be the three that you want to check out. You guys can DM me. My DMs are open. Always looking forward to connecting with new people. And again, thank you guys so much for having me on. Awesome, man. Uh, Chamber, anything you got before we roll out? No, I just want to go think about doing some drugs now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Absolutely. And before, uh, before we get out of here, just don't forget, we have launched officially the Coin HQ platform. So check us out there, coinhq.tv. What's the Twitter handle, Chamber? That's at coinhq underscore. Awesome. So check us out there. So far, so good, right? I think very good. Yeah, we're running a, a contest. If you guys haven't uh, seen it yet, hop on Twitter. We're giving away five Monero uh, on Monday. So this is going to come out what Thursday, uh, Wednesday evening, Thursday morning. Um, so you have a couple more days to participate in that for your chance at uh, some uh, some crypto. We're not giving away ten bucks. We're not giving away twenty bucks. We're giving away like I don't know, like four hundred bucks worth of crypto. So hop on board. Signed by Fluffy Pony himself, <laughs> yeah. R.I.P. It comes with a Fluffy Pony dance at the end. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's going to do it for us. Until next time, don't get wrecked. And that is financial advice. Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. You can help support us by giving us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and become a wrecked patron by signing up for a monthly tier on Patreon.com. That's patreon.com forward slash wrecked podcast. Don't get wrecked.